Welcome back. Here we are going to discuss the classification of uh, phylum platyhelminthes. In the previous presentation, we saw the general characteristic features of uh, platyhelminthes, and uh, we also mentioned that phylum platyhelminthes is classified into uh, three classes: uh, class Turbellaria, class Trematoda, and class Cystoda. And this classification is adopted uh, from Hyman, 1951. So we'll look into in detail the various features of uh, important features of turbellaria and uh, we have the trematoda. Okay, uh, the first class we will be discussing is class turbellaria. Class turbellaria, the name uh, turbella, it means in Latin a little string. Okay, and uh, they include uh, include a group of mostly free living uh, platforms. We already saw that uh, platyhelminthes mostly we can find both uh, free living as well as parasitic forms and the free living form turbellaria includes uh, free living platforms and uh, inhabiting uh, terrestrial marine and uh, freshwater uh, habitats and most of them are la large enough to be visible with the naked eye. Uh, body is unsegmented, that is, it is not segmented into head, trunk, or tail. It's not differentiable. It is dorsoventrally flattened as being a uh, uh, platyhelm mint, and uh, the body is uh, covered with a ciliated uh, epidermis, cellular or syncytial epidermis. It contains uh, uh, mucus secreting cells and uh, rhabdites. Rhabdites are rod shaped sub epidermal bodies. It is also known as rhabdoids, uh, and these are present, uh, th these actually uh, cover the uh, body. Okay. Then there are adhesive structures uh, present. Uh, the adhesive structures include uh, glandular or glandulomuscular cells, but hooks and suckers uh, are absent in the turbellarians. Usually, they are absent in turbellarians. Uh, which are found in most of the parasitic uh, forms of platyhelminth. Okay. Then uh, the complex musculature can be found and in some species even the diagonal muscles are also uh, present. Now the digestive tract it is unique in having a, uh, like a, a luminous in some forms, saccular in some forms and the, uh, in the example which we will be studying in detail it is highly branched. It is uh, found to be branching uh, the alimentary canal. Okay, it can the digestive system consists of mouth, pharynx, and intestine, and anus is absent. Uh, it's not found. Uh, regarding the excretory and osmoregulatory organs, uh, it is uh, via the presence of proteonephridia with plain cells, and the nervous system is uh, simple with an unspecialized brain and two or more longitudinal nerve cords. Uh, the, the sense organs uh, mainly it is represented by uh, tango receptors, chemo receptors, and photoreceptors. Uh, the development is direct, a simple life cycle, and uh, it is uh, usually direct, except in the case of uh, these two larvae, the Muller's larvae and Gotte's larvae, uh, in some of the polyclads. Otherwise, the, uh, the life cycle is simple and develop the, the, with a direct development. Uh, very important examples are Bipalin, Dugisi and Convoluta. Uh, these are the uh, a few turbellarians and uh, you can see uh, most of them are uh, like string-like, elongated string-like and that is why the name uh, turbellaria. Okay, so uh, when we are speaking about the Bipalin, the example which you are supposed to learn in detail, it is a genus uh, which uh, includes uh, terrestrial planarians. Okay. Uh, they are generally termed as hammer-headed uh, worms. You can see why it is named hammerhead. The bipalium, the term has come from two Latin words. Bi means two and pala means shovel or spade. Okay, so it resembles a pickaxe. Okay, uh, the uh, like a Y-shaped structures in the typical pickaxe. Uh, that is why the name has come bipalium. They include, the genus include includes large predatory terrestrial planarians. Predatory in the sense they prey upon earthworms, uh, some other species preying upon mollusks, mainly on earthworms we have, we can find them clearly. This particular bipalium, it is a very common one in Kerala, uh, in around uh, our area, we can find it uh, in the moist soil, okay, slithering around on the moist soil. They have an elongated body and head uh, bears. Okay, this part part it is known as an oracle. Even though we cannot differentiate uh, 
the body is not different to head, trunk and tail. But obviously, this part represents the head region. Okay, it does not uh, divide it, but we can uh, see that uh, since it is expanded at this anterior part, it is the head region. And the uh, head bears a row of numerous eyes uh, along its margin and uh, sides of and uh, or sides of the anterior part of the body. So, uh, it do have uh, uh, what you call photoreceptors, very unique uh, arrangement. The dorsal uh, surface of the body is striped usually and uh, ventral surface on the other hand, it is provided with a longitudinal creeping sole and uh, it helps in actually the slithering movement. Uh, as already mentioned, it feeds upon earthworms and uh, mollusks and uh, uh, during feeding what happens is these bipalium, they evert their pharynx from their mouth. That is, they actually put their pharynx out to their mouth and it secretes the digestive enzymes onto the prey. Digestion takes place outside the body and the digested tissues, the uh, what you call, uh, it is being uh, absorbed into the branching elementary canal by seal reaction. So that is how it happens. Okay, uh, um, since the same thing happens in Dugesia, which we'll be learning as a type species, we'll be learning it in detail over there. Okay, this is with regard to the turbellaria and bipallium. Okay, so bipallium, it is a predatory terrestrial planaria. It comes under uh, phylum platyhelminthus class turbellaria. And as a part of the uh, practicals, you are supposed to uh, study the specimen in detail, especially the morphological features and unique features, and you are supposed to draw the diagram in your record. Okay, fine. Thank you.